What's up everyone, it is Zadie Gaming's if you ask score here, and I would like to make a solo lane tier list for the 3.11 patch. This is a little bit different from the last tier list, because the last tier list was more focused on um, newer players, while this is more towards a high level of play, specifically in, you know, ranked games and in competitive games. So, here you go, let's start. This is mainly going to be reflecting the... Uh, changes to Mark of the Vanguard, and possibly Throwing Dagger. So we will start off with Ama. Ama's still really strong, in my opinion. I think she's still pretty strong. I think she, you could have her hover in between S and A+, if I can get her to sit there. I don't think I can. There we go. You could have her hovering between S and A+. She got a little bit weaker, I think. A little bit weaker, but not an entire tier weaker, because with Mark of the Vanguard, um, gods like Kabraken are so much more prevalent in solo lane. Uh, Kabraken and Kumba and Sobek, Ymir, Athena are pretty much guardians that will pretty much bully you in the early game, with the exception of Sobek. But all those other guys will pretty much bully you in the early game, and they're a lot more viable in the meta right now. So I think Amma's a little bit of a weaker pick just due to her already bad clear and bad ability to survive the lane phase. But once you get past that laning phase, she's a very strong pick and should be considered at any level of play. Um, Alquang. I've been seeing a lot of Alquang solo with the recent patch, but I don't really think it's that good. I would say it's probably B+, in my opinion. He has a lack of clear early, unless he goes Soulstone Purple Pot, which if he goes Soulstone Purple Pot, you need your jungler to get his ass in there, kill him, get first blood, whatever. And that's pretty much it for him. So, any warrior should be able to outpoke him, out damage him, especially in the early game. But once he starts getting a few items online, like once he gets his um, Polynomicon, Obsidian Shard, and Pen Boots, that's pretty much at that point you're a little bit you're a little bit late, and you need to have shut him down before then. Um, pretty much every hunter was around this A. A, B plus tier, and I would say now they're towards the B plus B tier. With the nerfs to Throwing Dagger, it makes their clear a little bit weaker in the early game, and it makes their poke a little bit weaker as well. So it's a lot easier to survive the laning phase. And post level 7 or 8-ish is when almost every warrior can full clear the wave easily. Same with Guardians. So around that 7, 8, 9 level-ish is when you should start dominating that lane and the hunters become pretty much ineffective as, as long as you haven't given them kills earlier. So all hunters, we're going to say, are in pretty much B tier, except for AMC. So we're just going to throw the hunters in here. Um, Where's the rest of the fucking hunters? Actually, Hoi is probably a little bit better. Just because he's OP as fuck. Throw her there. Medusa. Neath is also pretty bad just because she doesn't really synergize well with Golden Bow. Um. Rom. So yeah. Any hunters in solo are really much weaker. Especially with the buffs to um, Mark of the Vanguard. Guardians will not die in solo. And X ball. Uh, Uller. I think that's all the hunters. So there's your hunters. They're all pretty much. They're much weaker than they were last patch with the nerfs to throwing dagger and the buffs to um, Mark of the Vanguard. So that's where you'll be seeing hunters as sort of in that lower tier, more situational type picks. Athena. Athena's actually not that bad in solo right now. I'd say she's about A. Plus. Maybe. No, we're going to say A. She has a lack of clear early game, but the thing is, is that she doesn't really need that clear. Like, as soon as she hits 5, she can start rotating and, like, getting other lanes fed for pretty much free. Like, she kind of allows for early game tower dives as well as, like, kill secures with the ult, dash, taunt, all that kind of stuff, you know? I think it doesn't really need that early game farm, and plus, with the buff to Mark of the Vanguard, it helps her survive a lot in the laning phase against the Warriors, so you're looking at Athena as a pretty decently strong pick for solo. Bacchus has no clear. I don't think he's very good. 
in solo. Bologna's still pretty good. I'd say she's A+. Plus. She gets um she gets a hassled in lane by Kabraken. So that's why she's a little bit lower tier, I think. I think she's a little bit lower tier than last week. Maybe, maybe not, I can't remember. But she gets she gets a little bit hassled by Kabraken who is a very strong pick in solo right now. So that's kind of one of the reasons why she's a little bit weaker. Kabraken, I'm going to put him up in S tier. Can I not? Fantastic. See, so yeah, I'm going to put him up in S tier. Um, I think Kabraken's a really strong pick because he does really well in lane. He won't die because of Mark of the Vanguard. He synergizes really well with uh, Breastplate of Valor and Warlock Sash. And he still transitions incredibly well into the late game once you get your Soul Reaver and some pen. Because you can just... You can kill a Squishy, wall off the entire enemy team if you're fighting in the jungle... And they just, they can't get out, and you've pretty much won a team fight just with that ultimate. Plus, he does it, he does so well in the laning phase that sometimes you can get kills early on gods that you really shouldn't be getting kills on, like fucking Robin. And he can snowball really hard off of that, and that really gives your team a huge lead, because that just gives you it gets you fed. And Kabraken is impossible to stop once he's fed. He's very strong right now, and you're looking to pick him a lot. I might actually have to make um. A specific guide for him because he's been out of the meta for so long. Chalk, I think Chalk is down here with the hunters. Uh, uh, we'll put him up a little bit. Chalk has a lot of sustain. Uh, he really won't die in lane, but it doesn't really matter because like he needs to get fed in order to be relevant mid or late game. Like, he doesn't do any damage, he doesn't bring any hard CC outside of his silence on the ultimate. He doesn't really have an incredible teamfight presence, because basically his 1 and his 2 are useless. His 3 is only used for the slow, and then his ult is only used for the silence. Whereas if you're looking at someone like Ama, she has the really good stances for her first ability. You have power, movement speed, really strong for your team when you're engaging or backing off or looking to shred towers. She's got her 2, which hits like a nuke late game. She has a silence on her 3. She has the uh, stun on her ultimate, which is a massive AoE stun. Like, she's just m much better because they do similar things, kind of. But she just does everything much better. Except for sustain, really. Chang'e. Chang'e's pretty bad. I wouldn't really pick her. Uh, Kronos, he's a little bit... He's alright, actually. He's okay. I mean, he's not really great. He'll get destroyed by any other warrior or uh, guardian in the solo, but if you're laning against, like, an assassin or a hunter, you can kind of pub stomp him. Baka is... down here somewhere. Where should he find his place? Probably down with the hunters. Bokasur really relies on getting fed early, and with the changes to Mark of the Vanguard, he can't really do that much anymore because there's a lot more Guardians in Solo, so he can't really... It's hard for him to shred Guardians until he gets multiple items online, like he needs his Chin Size, he needs his Fatalis, he needs his um, Warrior Tobbies, you know, all that kind of stuff. He needs those items so that his true damage will really hit hard and so that it'll hit quickly. You're not really looking to play Baka that much anymore. Unless it's against one of these other B tier gods. Um. Oh, I missed Cupid. Fuck Cupid. Fafnir's not good in solo. Don't play him in solo. He has no clear. Afro as well. She's on like C tier. Fenrir is actually not bad right now. We'll put him in between B plus and A. Because Fenrir can actually do well in the lane. You know, he has a lot of sustain with his two. He can really punish um, lane freezing. So if you're at his tower line and trying to punish him and by zoning him out of XP, he can just ult you and you're kind of dead. And he, he can ult you, auto you a few times, stun you, and then you're fucked. Because you're taking a million tower shots. So Fenrir's actually not that bad right now. Um... Guan Yu is still strong-ish, but I think he's moved down a little bit because gods like Kabraken will completely shit on him in lane, as well as Athena, as well as Ymir, who is also pretty good right now. 
So Guan Yu gets countered pretty hard in lane right now from a lot of gods. So actually, we're going to put him in A+. Plus. But the thing is, is that his late game presence really makes up for that. Like, as long as he doesn't give kills early, he can still snowball. Or not snowball, but he can still um, come online late and really be a major presence in a team fight, despite being, you know, a thousand gold behind his enemy laner. Hades is not very good. We'll put him in B tier with the Hunters. Same with Hell, she's not good. I'll put, him, put her in C. Chang'e is a little bit better than Afro and Hell, so we'll put her actually in B tier. Hercules is alright. I mean, he's just he's just predictable. He's going to do the same stuff he always does. Nothing changed. Hub was... Uh, it's alright. Put him in B+. Plus. No, I'll put him in B. Because you still need that front line. Like, if you notice, all the top tier gods really are like front liners. Ex excluding Fenrir, who is usually at least somewhat tanky. Kali is probably down here. Kumba. Kumba is probably up in, in between A and A+. Kumba solo is actually lit right now. You can interrupt Kabraken's Tremors, Bologna's Bludgeon, you can um, interrupt Guan Yu's Taolu Assault, you can outclear Athena after a few levels. Like, Kumba's actually in a pretty good place right now, and if Kumba gets ahead, he's ahead for good. Like, there's no stopping the Kumba. Um, his real job in the laning phase, though, is like, don't die, try to get kills, and just farm up until the late game. Because in the late game, when you've got your Soul Reaver and you've got your Warlock Sash or your um, Ethereal Staff or whatever you're getting on Kumba, you just ult someone and they're pretty much fucking dead. Especially if they're like, or if they're squishy, they're pretty much fucking dead. Kumba's actually pretty strong right now in solo, I'm not gonna lie. Loki is down here in B as well. Loki just gets shit on. Especially if, if there's a guardian now. Like, he just dies. Merc. Right there. Merc's not that good right now. Like, he's an already, like, not a top pick for jungle. He's very situational. And so when you take him out of that jungle role and put him in his even less comfortable role, like solo, he's even weaker. So he's just, he's just not super good right now. He also just gets out cleared by a lot of people despite having throwing dagger because he can get bullied in lane really easily. Nam, Nesha, Nox. Odin. Odin is pretty weak, to be honest. I think I'd say he's like B. Odin's alright. I mean, he's, he's very situational. Oh. The thing with Odin is that, like, he's just like Hercules, you know, you know exactly what he's going to do, you know exactly when he's going to do it, and do you have a Willix? Like, a Willix is going to ult you, you come down, and you get collapsed on before you can even press 4. Like, he's not that good right now, and that's that's for a very good reason. He's just so predictable, and he's so easy to kind of outplay, like... If you have any jump or any sort of immunity, you can pretty much avoid all the damage from his 2-1 combo, and there, that's all his damage. That's all he's got. That's it. Odin is like, he's nothing late game except for an ult bot. Nothing. Osiris. Osiris is good, actually. I'd say he's about B+. Plus. We'll put him in A. The buffs to his, or the buff to his three, the cooldown was reduced by about three seconds, which is a stupid buff, because he was already really good in lane. Basically allow him to stay alive in team fights for a little bit more, stay alive in lane a little bit better. But, I mean, they didn't really help that much. I mean, he was already a good pick, so you're going to be seeing him about the same amount of time, just because while that did help him a little bit, Guardians were also buffed, which allowed them to get into the solo, so... And they can kind of manhandle Osiris. Like, they can kind of... If you've got, like, Kabraken, he can just shit on Osiris. Like, the early game damage mitigation from Osiris doesn't really matter. You get the one, you get the two, you get the tremors, you get the ult. He's pretty much fucking dead. Like, you're 100 to zeroed. 
The only like S tier god right now that I would say is probably Kabraken. <clears throat> this I can think of. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ratatoska is about A tier. Uh, he's he's strong, but as long as he don't really give up any kills, he doesn't do too much later on. Um, his protection shred actually isn't as strong as people originally thought it would be, and his heal is really weak. So he doesn't have any sustain in lane, and his kill potential is really high. But as long as you don't let him kill you, you're in a very good place. Raven's actually a little bit weaker. Um, Raven gets bullied in lane really badly by Kabraken. As long as Raven's 2 is down, Kabraken can shit on him. With Kabraken's 1, you are immune to slows on Raven's 1, roots on Raven's 3, and you can just shit on him. Like, you can actually shit on Raven with a god now. Like, he actually has a counter. It's Kabraken now. So, you definitely want to be picking Kabraken into Raven, as he's just a very strong pick against Raven. He does very well in the laning phase, and he can really bully him out of lane. Which is weird. Sobek? Haven't played him around too much with Sobek, but I think he's about AA+. Plus. Put him in between. Sobek has really weak clear early on, but his teamfight presence is so crazy. And, like, the plucks under the tower early game really bring a lot to your lane pressure and really show the enemy laner, like, who they're fucking with. I think Sobek is a pretty strong pick right now, as long as you can survive the first few levels when you really can't clear the wave. But as soon as you can start clearing the wave, Sobek becomes very strong. You know, uh, you use your 3, your 2, and the wave's done. You can start bullying the enemy laner, pluck them under your tower, ult them. You, d you do a lot of damage. You can actually bully people out of lane, and Sobek's a pretty strong pick right now. Sun Wukong? Sun Wukong is about A+. Sun Wukong is pretty good in lane, and he transitions pretty well into the late game, but he has the same deal with Raven, where he can really only single out one person if he's using his Tiger. But if he's using his Ox, he really helps out the team a lot, because he can create a lot of disruption in the backline. Which is actually really strong right now, because if, if there's Scylla is knocked up or stunned and she can't detonate her too for example at least she's she's a little fucked you know that's all her damage Sun Wukong can really create a lot of disruption like that in the back line that's kind of his job and he does it very well right now he also has a lot of self-sustain so he doesn't have to worry about getting peeled for he can self-peel he can heal himself he really just sticks to himself and he does whatever the fuck he wants to do I mean he's good in lane but early game you're going to have a lot of troubles in lane uh, until you get your boots. But once you get your boots, you should be able to one or two shot the wave. So Sun Wukong is a, a strong pick right now, and you definitely want to be picking him. Tier is actually not that good right now. I'm going to say he's about A tier, and the reason is... Tier gets beaten in lane by Kabraken. Ama. Kumba. Sobek. Athena. Osiris, Robin. Tyr gets beaten in lane by a lot of people and he doesn't bring too much to a team fight. He CCs one person out of the fight, which it can be useful, but it's, it's so situational. And the chances of you hitting multiple people with your Fearless are really low, especially if you're playing against a good team. So I don't think Tyr's a, a super hot pick right now, like he was last patch. Guardians in the solo lane, they're CC powerhouses. Tears 1 is countered by hard CC. So there you have it. Tears Tears a lot weaker in lane this patch. I think he went from like A plus S minus ish to like A tier. So I think I think Tears is going to be picked up a, a little bit less. But Mana is actually pretty strong right now. I'm going to say he's about A plus. But Mana is really good in lane. He's a really safe pick and he can full clear the wave at level 2 with bluestone. Vamana is just—he's just a really safe pick, and the thing is, is like, he trans—he um, transitions really well into the late game because he has the slow for attack speed and movement speed on his three. His two hits hard. His one creates a lot of disruption and allows him to self peel. His ult creates incredible amounts of disruption in the backline of a team fight. And if you have frostbound and chins, you're gonna be doing a shit ton of damage as well as slowing them, and they can't get out. Vamana is a really strong pick right now. He's also really safe, and you should really look to play Vamana in solo, especially if you just don't know what to play against. Like if you're if you're landing against something and you don't know what to play, 
I, I advise that you play Vamana. He's just incredibly safe in lane, and he does a lot of stuff in the late game, so he doesn't really fall off like a lot of the other lane bullies do. Susano, you're not you don't want to play him, play him in solo anymore. He's not really OP anymore. So solo is his his weaker role now. It's a lot weaker than it used to be. Hey Ninja Slab, how you doing, buddy? Susano just doesn't have that early game kill pressure as much as he used to, at least. So he's a lot easier to sort of outplay and to lane against. And he still doesn't do too much late, so you really you're just gonna be wanting you're just going to want to be jungling with um, Susano. Xing Qian is about A tier. He doesn't have that much clear ever. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. And I'm glad to hear that. But, um, yeah, so Xing, does, Xing Ten doesn't have that much clear late, but he does really well against lane bullies because he can just heal up all of their poke with his HP 5, and that's why. Xing Ten is actually a strong pick despite not having the best of clear ever. Ymir. Ymir fucking pub stomps, dude. With the changes to Mark of the Vanguard, Ymir will not die in lane against a physical character. He just won't. He won't die. He has the damage, he has the 10 protections on Mark of the Vanguard, the 10% damage dealt reduction <coughs> on enemies afflicted by his um, abilities. He also has the incoming damage is reduced by 5 passive on Mark of the Vanguard. Ymir won't, Ymir won't die in lane. He has actually a, a decent presence late game with his slow, wall, stun, huge AoE zoning slash secure tool, ult, thing, whatever. So Ymir is actually a strong pick in solo right now. I haven't played around with it too much, but I know that I've gotten my ass handed to me as er, by a Ymir. So, there you have it. This is pretty much your general tier list for a sort of higher level of play. This is going to be for your like gold, plat, maybe low diamond-ish level of play. This is for the solo lane. Not really a new player's tier list. I might make a separate one for newer players, but there you have it. So this is um, ZFS Vescor. Um, I will see you guys later. So peace out.